for the positions and but the cost of them and they are being made daily into profile banks and food service. I've been tracking it to make sure it's all going into the right account. And what about the phone bill? Where are we finding a different provider for phone service? So, so far, the provider that, that they have looked into are not offering anything better than what we're getting from Fairpoint, which we're still looking at. Have you talked to Fairpoint and asked for a better deal? I've talked deal? to Fairpoint and they think we're anything better than what they're doing. Right now, they've talked to Fairpoint. You've got to keep in mind that we just switched from day one to Fairpoint only a little over a year ago. They were a little away from Bayland. There's, there's not much competition between Fair Point and Bayland, other than going to an internet provider. And they, they're not suggesting we do that because of the problems with an internet telephone service in a business or in a school environment. Speaking about cafe services, uh, Liz and I are going to go to Barrington on the 27th, 11 o'clock. try to walk us through it a little bit and then I'll be back again when AYP comes out. So um, this is first the first graph um, you see here are uh, those are a reading and these are mathematics and you'll see two different grades. That's so that you can see the kneecap assessment assesses compares the data for grade each year, grade three against grade three, grade four against grade four to see growth in the same grade level. What I've brought for you here, when you're looking at three, four, is you're seeing third grade students and then how they perform in the fourth grade. I'm comparing student to student in these graphs. And the state assessment results don't do that. They compare third grade to third grade, fourth grade to fourth grade. And people always say, well, what about the cohort of students? So that's what this is. That's why there are two grades on that graph. You can see how they scored when they were third graders, how they scored when they were four, fifth, sixth, along the way for reading and for mathematics. Those are the same students compared to the same students. And the assessment results aren't normally reported that way. I'm always asked. Apples to apples. Apples to apples, apples correct. Because the next, it be like the next set of data you're going to receive is what the state assessment is based on, our results are based on, whether or not we made adequate yearly progress. It's not based on the same student. This is the same cohort of students, grade to grade, so you can see how they're doing. Okay, so ready for the next batch. <laughs> and I'm giving you just last year and this year in this first graph comparing Paul School students to the state by grade level. Dale and I were at a NECAP reporting workshop, workshop today. today. <laughs> makes sense to me. It doesn't always make sense to everybody else, but um, okay. So we'll start going through this. You can, these columns are the call school last year, and then what the state scored, <coughs> and then call school this year, and what the state scored, so that you can see. Um, this is the way state results are released. 
third grade is compared to last year's third grade. Fourth grade is compared to last year's fourth grade. So if you look for trends, um, grade five scored 70 last year and 74 this year. That's the percent of students who are proficient in reading. That's the way our scores are reported, our percent of students who are proficient. The goal is to get all students, 100% of our students, to proficient by the year 2013. Grade 6 had an increase. It went from 69% to 78%. Grade 7 had an increase from 67 to 76. Is it, is it clear how to read? Mm -hmm. I mean, there's all kinds of different graphs. I'm just trying to show you different ways to look at the results. And then the bottom half is math. Same thing, Paul School last year against the state, Paul School this year against the state. You'll see an increase in grade six from 62% proficient to 71%. Grade eight has an increase from 65% to 73%. I gave you just two years, we can go back five years of data, and sometimes the graphs are just so cumbersome, I just thought, you know, a couple years is enough to see where we're going. If you need more information, I can certainly provide you with more. Now, the next page is getting us to get, yes, we're right ahead. I guess what's concerning me is I'm looking at grade three, grade three. Yeah. and we're seeing both in reading and math. Mm -hmm. um, going down, 75 to 71, 83 Correct. to 69. Correct. And I guess the reason this group concerns me so much is because it's the first year they're being tested, so it's kind of what they learned from K through 3. So that group is concerning me more Correct. because you're getting a decrease. Mm -hmm. Now, it's not the same. It, it, you're right. Um, but it's not the same case. Right. Whereas the other graph I gave you was showing the same kids. You're right. We're going from the third graders in 2010 are compared to the third graders in 2011. And yes, they didn't. This year's third graders didn't do as well as last year's third graders. But they're different kids. The state compares grade to grade. Right. Today at the workshop that we were um, in, they were talking about with large districts like yeah. Manchester and Nashua, you're not seeing this kind of flexibility right. that you're seeing with small schools because it's so dependent on just a small sample size. And so they may fluctuate one or two points where we see wild fluctuations of eight, nine points sometimes. There gotta be three kids. But if you look at the previous one that you gave us that does compare the same, same kids, you're, right. you're, you're, you're starting in third does. grade and that's <laughs> dropping as well going into fourth grade. Yeah. So now yeah. you're right. I'm concerned. Yeah. So what we try to do, Judy, is all of our curriculum is aligned to the state standards. That's what I've been doing for four years, so I've been here. Um, all of our curriculum meetings, we talk about K through 8. It is school-wide. Um, our reading materials, of Reading Street, are K through 8. The um, mathematics program, Everyday Math, is K through 5. They're using the same materials. Our curriculum is aligned. I think it's probably a matter of getting kids more used to taking assessments. Um, I can't, you know, when I look at our scores, I always want our scores to be increasing because I feel like, what else can we do besides what we have to do? We've really focused on curriculum. We have really focused on standards. When I meet with grade level teams, um, what I've been doing now is I pull out, we're going to performance pathways. It's a program that the Department of Ed provides. You can go into specific test items and I can uh, sort on 50% or less. So I can pull up items that Paul School students have trouble with. Not compared to the state, us. What did we score 50% or less in reading and mathematics? <coughs> I bring those to the grade level teachers and the kinds of conversations we have are, well, is it addressed this way in everyday math? Because that's our math program. Uh, measurement, the rule is a 
someone said, well, the rulers might be different. That was an item that gave kids trouble in third grade. They provide the rulers, so no, that isn't an issue. They're standardized rulers that they give in with the assessment. But we have those kinds of conversations. And we talk about, well, we don't always address that. There's, a, uh, there's an item where the student has to use the word in multiple meanings, like to plant a tree or um, a plant that, that is a tree. One's the noun, one's the verb. And the student has to choose which word goes in the sentence. And I've had teachers <coughs> say to me, well, we don't do a lot with dictionary skills. So maybe that's something that we, we haven't spent enough time on. But if it's part of our state standards, then those are the kinds of conversations we have. I can honestly say I, I, um, I don't know why our scores just don't improve every year. I mean that. When I first came, things were very different with the focus on not where it needed to be as strongly on the state standards. And it really is now. The conversations I have with teachers are that specific. Not that I want or I'm trying to recommend that teachers teach to the test. That isn't it. It's, if this is part of our state standards and this is what our kids are held accountable to, then how are we preparing our students? And those conversations happen with the teachers. So when you see something like that, there's absolutely no argument against it. You're right. We can't argue with the numbers. The trend is down. If I could tell you why, I'd tell you why. I'd just tell you all the things that we've, we've been doing. I don't know either. Last year was all excited. We almost made it. What's the difference between last year and this year? It's different kids. But nothing's changed in terms of what we're doing in the school. I really feel that way. I, I, I really so do. So the curriculum's all been the same. It's just around the kids. Yeah, I know. This is different kids, but she's right. You, if you look at the data, yeah. the, you know, we want our slope this way always. Yeah. And it isn't always. Yeah. So when I get the results, I say the same thing. How come? Is there any difference between kids being in a classroom with a teacher that's been here a while and in a classroom where there's a new teacher? Does that put them on edge? Does it make them not concentrate? Does it you mean when they take the, the yeah. assessment? Actually, there were studies done. Um, there were studies done when I was in Concord about making students comfortable and they need to be with their regular teacher. That had an effect if they had a substitute or, or uh, a paraprofessional took them into a different setting. That might have had an adverse effect. But as long as they're with their teacher, that, that was all the study found. Keep the kids in their own classroom with their own teacher. I, there, I haven't, I'm not aware of any study that longevity of the teacher, how that affects the test scores. Not that I'm aware of. It seems like grade three, you know, I guess the first year of testing, but that's where mm -hmm. you have the most drop. Mm -hmm. you know, um, yeah. 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 You, I wonder, just you know, it's it's tough at each group too to be yeah. testing. I wonder if that's yeah. even better. You know, but it's not well, the same thing is happening between three and four too. Mm -hmm. It's not and new to them. Three. They they are given the Dibbles early reading assessment. They are given Ames Web. Those are tests. It's not like the assessment is the first test that third grade students take. They don't. They take reading and math in Ames Web, and they also take reading assessment. So. It's the first time they take the state assessment, but it's not the first time they've tested it. Some kids don't test well. Mm -hmm. yeah. this, this isn't excuses either. It's, it's not. No, like, no. But we're talking about deals at small numbers. That's so right. there's so extreme fluctuation yeah. because yeah. of small numbers. Yeah. You said you need to look at just what the Paul School does. Is yes. there anything you can suggest that maybe we're not doing? Maybe we need to implement, or in addition to, are we. I mean, I think I find that sometimes, you know, uh, that age group, I mean, it should, they say more, should we focus more on how to research or, or use, um, like I said, we should be able to research Yeah, those, those are the kinds of items that, that, that I bring to the teachers, and that's exactly what we talk about. What else should we be doing, or, or are we doing enough of this, or um, how in our curriculum do we address this? We do. I, I, I honestly feel, you know, I get Is the there anything that the teachers are lacking in their classroom for materials and no. supplies? And no. we can bring in to help. Um, actually, well, when the new assessment comes on board, it is going to be computer-based. That's another issue in a couple of years. In terms of kneecap, no. We have brought in math coaches. We have uh, research-based mathematics and reading programs. I have spent lots of money with Title II grants 
fine manipulatives for them, buying um, supplemental reading materials so that they have classroom libraries. We have intervention periods so that yeah, we're looking we've at changed students. The schedule. We've changed the schedule so that we're yeah. looking at small groups yeah. so that you can identify which ones need what. Oh, I know all the things that we've done. Yeah. I guess my question is why isn't it working? What do we need yeah. to do that will work? What about the difference in the math and how the, the math is being done? I know we're going to be changing that over to the Common Core. And mm -hmm. Sometimes the math means that why am I supposed to be down with us with this? Our program, Everyday it's Math, is, is the most common math program used in the state of New Hampshire. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it is. Do you find a lot of the schools are I mean, uh, experiencing the same thing with the difficulty in the math area of that age group? Uh, because there's reading and the word problems give the kids trouble. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yes. But I walked by uh, Lori Royal's class the other day where she had kids doing word problems up on the overhead projector and they were reading them, walking through every step, and she was talking about strategies and how did you solve it, how did you solve it. I mean, I'm in the building a lot. I walk by classrooms unannounced. I go in. She was doing exactly that. Walking Are they all doing that? Those kids school? through. Um, I mean, all the third, because that's where it seems to be the most problem. Yeah, Are yeah. they all doing it? That's what they do during intervention time. They differentiate that instruction during intervention mm -hmm. time. We need to do it more often, or to the entire <coughs> class versus just a small group. Um, and maybe I don't know if it's whole. I don't know if it's whole group or not. That's something I'll find. I think that's difficult. We're talking about interventions are for all kids at that time. Yeah, larger groups that are more enrichment. You know, a smaller cohort of kids for that are benchmarked, and then you have your lower tier kids that are really divided up in math specialists and reading specialists, mm -hmm. Title One, and it, it's a target group where we're working with two or three kids, and there's some interventions are working one on one. Do they all work? Do they, all the teachers use the same format as far as the overhead projection going through? I know word problems are really tough to that age group. I mean, it's very difficult to understand and sometimes mm -hmm. to break it down as to what mm -hmm. you're actually asking for. Are right. all the teachers use that, or it just happens to be that one teacher? We meet with that for with Melinda's part of that group, mm -hmm. um, the RTI team. We meet with mm -hmm. all of that grade level and discuss all of the students, all three tiers, what interventions are they using, what students are getting it, what students are not getting it. Yeah. Linda and I bring suggestions to the teachers of ideas for the tier one, tier two, and tier three kids. Mm -hmm. uh, and I, I think by far the teachers walk away with more ideas on things that they can do, uh, a better understanding of their kids, and they look at the whole grade, not just their classroom. Mm -hmm. uh, so there's a lot more conversations about mm -hmm. that now. Mm -hmm. That just sounds like you know, usually we're going through a word yeah. problem. Yeah, we have to be what, taught how to what read they really need, is yeah. how to read it and know yeah. what you know what they're looking for. Yeah. We just had to be up on Title I for um, yeah. the, the math reading problem right. person to just come in on yes. uh, the last early release early day. Yeah. 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 Workshop that is specifically day. On, yeah. on math, students who struggle with math. Does anybody else have questions of Linda? I'm going to look at one more page. Sure. Right I just here. wanted to get yes, questions yes. on this. I, I understand. I understand. Yeah. I'm just trying to get you prepared for AYP because that's the next April 2nd. Um, April 3rd, 3rd, public. April 3rd. Public. Yeah. At 10 a.m. April 2nd for Gail and I, so we can go in there and look at our data and try to figure out what's what. And the reason why I'm giving you these scores in this format is because the cut scores were raised this year for the percent of students who have to be at the proficient level. The way you get the proficient level is you add the percentage of students who are at level 3 and level 4. So that's what that 71 is out in the column. I added these for you. Proficient and above, it's level three and level four. So I added the percentages of students at level three and level four and put it over 95 because 95 is the cut score this year that will be used to determine AYP. So all of those numbers, when you add up our number of students who are at the third and fourth level, that's proficient and proficient with distinction are supposed to total 95%. <clears throat> the cut scores will be raised once more where we reach 100%. That's, that's the federal legislation that we'll drop up behind. 100% of the students reading and 
performing math at grade level. And I did the same on the bottom with the math for you. The cut score for math is 94%. It'll be interesting to see what handful of schools actually meet AYP this year. It's going to be very limited. It's going to be a handful yeah. this time. Yeah. And at 100%? 100%. That's what the federal legislation was written to. Right. By 2013, 100% of our students have to get levels three and four. That's why I added those two together, because that's how we get our percent position. And those reports will be coming out in April. I just I, I look at them. I look at trends like you do, Judy. It discourages me too. Um, but I'm trying to be realistic here by showing you what the cut scores are going to be. What about the writing scores? I was very disappointed in mm -hmm. those as well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, A strength of, of the reading street reading program is that it, it, it combines reading and writing into literacy activities. That's the, one of the reasons why we choose Reading Street as our reading program, so that we're not separating reading and writing. They read stories and um, there are questions where they, are, they write responses to their reading, so it's integrated. That's one of the strengths of our programs. Um, you're right, those, those scores aren't that high either. We do have some students at level four, um, but I didn't give you cut scores for that because writing isn't part of AI food. Are the cut scores or the federal legislation reasonable? Well, people question that when No Child Left Behind was first introduced. That by the, I mean, it feels like ages ago when it was said by the year 2013, all students will be reading and performing mathematics at grade level. <coughs> and so, in increments, the cut scores have been raised. And when we first started, it didn't hurt so bad. But now we're looking at 95 and 94 percent, and the next the next round will be 100 percent. So what were the original ones? What were the first? Oh, I can't like remember. 60, 60, 60, 60, 60, 60, 60, 60, 60, 60, 60, 60, 60, 60, 60, 60, 60, 60, 60, 60, 60, 60, 60, 60, 60, 60, 60, 60, 60, 60, 60, 60, 60, 60, 60, 60, 60, 60, 60, 60, 60, 60, 60, from no child because there's no teacher assessment in New Hampshire? Right. Um, at the first round, the first round, when um, there were, I've forgotten how many states um, applied there's, for the exemption. At that, 10 or 12 now, Yeah, something like that. Mm -hmm. At that time, New Hampshire didn't have a statewide system that included student assessment data into their um, system. By the time the next round comes around, we may have that in place and um, is it student or teacher? You, you said teacher the last name. It's teacher evaluation, but it's it, you have to have student data as part of the teacher evaluation process. That's what the that's what the thing is that we don't have. You have to use student data as part of the teacher evaluation. Process. Do we know whether New Hampshire is doing anything towards oh, mm -hmm. mo yeah. moving yes, towards I'm that? Yes, you. Yeah. SAU 64 is the yes. head on this thing yeah. <laughs> because we are as a, in Milton, we're a state district, so it's required. And so we've done it as an SAU because you can see it coming. And so we, that's what we're going to present in um, April. At the April meeting for the SAU, our teacher evaluation system that does include uh, Do you know, are there other school districts that are pushing? Because, you know, there's power of uh, numbers. All of the um, six schools are required. I think there are nine. There are some other school districts that have joined in just on their own. Like Hudson is one of them that's in our group. And and it's coming. I mean, it's like you know, everybody's working on it together. But it's trying to. Every time we think we've done it, they change the rules a little bit. So um, that sometimes throws us a little bit, and then we have to restart. You know. But there's ten or twelve states that have already got it ahead of us. You can use those as models. Some you can, and some you can't. Some are like uh, Kentucky and Tennessee, and some of those have. It, it, Remember, New Hampshire is like live free or die, and things are very decentralized. In other words, it's up to each individual district to do things, and things are not run by the state. Whereas in other states, things are run state controlled. There's a state curriculum. There's a big state department of education, and they have more. They they dictate things more. In New Hampshire, it's it's more individual local control. Local control. It really is, and so it's a little different. 
but I, I will say that we're in that process. And I'll kind of tap on to what Linda's mm -hmm. saying because we just went to this uh, workshop this morning that is all about um, our, our transition to going to the Common Core. Mm -hmm. So I was going to um, just talk a little bit about, so fall next year, we'll take the NEPAP again in the fall, and then 2013-14 we'll take the kneecap again, mm -hmm. and then the kneecap's gone mm -hmm. after that. So there's two more rounds of kneecap, yeah. and then the kneecap is gone. And then in 14-15, uh, we're going to be taking an assessment called Smarter Balance, and that will be in the spring, and it will be more like the NWEA, like we take it computerized, it's going to be all computerized, <coughs> and it will give you a level it will adjust to students answering correctly or not. They also talked about the performance component of Smarter Balance, mm -hmm. but um, I don't know a lot about that yet. They don't really they don't know. know a lot about they it. They don't know it a lot about writing. it It will include writing. It will include writing. But we're not losing writing. And um, they talked a lot about that transition. So what they were suggesting is that, is it next year they're going to take some of the areas in math off the NECAP? for example, data, mm -hmm. statistics, mm -hmm. because that's not emphasized at the lower grade levels in the uh, Common Core. The Common Core is moving, it's, the language arts is very similar, yes, right, Linda? Yeah. But the um, math is um, more concentrated on uh, numeracy, and, and primary, grades. primary grades are very concentrated yeah. on fewer areas, yeah. and then gradually mm -hmm. increasing. And areas like statistics are right. coming into and like actually six, seven, eight, eight, which now that goes across our curriculum. Um, they have found through research that students don't comprehend. Well, I mean, we're going back a few years to what we used to do in math. <laughs> we're, gonna, mm. we're going backwards. Back, 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 to, back to basics. basics. Uh, actually, no, I way. wouldn't say totally back to basics, though. They said it's integrating the two. Mm -hmm. It's just that in the primary grades, I'm trying to find the chart that was a really... It's more basic. Though, it? Yeah, right. numbers it's and definitely operations. more numbers Geometry and Geometry is a strand that goes all the, all way, the way through. through. But Statistics is moved to six, seven, and eight. Right. Um, it was data statistics. There was a chart that was. Um, it's even six, seven, eight, and nine, four, five. Right. And what they did is, um, I know you can't see this. It's like a comparison. So the darkened pieces are the areas that. So the cross-cutting competencies are counting and cardinality, operations and algebraic thinking, number and operations. Those are starting in kindergarten, but. There's very few things, whereas, like, right now, all of those are, are we're doing a little bit of everything. Right. And so concentrating It'll be more on, concentrated. Yeah, yeah. more yeah. instead yeah. of yeah. across the board, everything. trying to get a little yes. bit of everything. Yes. And so what yes. they were, one of the things that we were talking yeah. about this transition is what could we do now that would help us in the future when we take this test? And one of the things we talked about is really moving to the Common Core in the K-1-2 area where they're not tested anyway. Mm -hmm. So looking at the Common Core um, standards more specifically <coughs> at the primary grades, and then it's almost like it rolls up as the grades roll up. So um, that's one thing that we're going to look at. And if you get them started now, Right, the right. when they get into that right. third grade right. testing, mm -hmm. they'll be ahead of them. Right. right. And it looks to me like the testing is still going to be 3 through 8 and then in and grade 11. 11. Yeah. And I'm surprised because I thought we were going to do 9 and 10 as well, but it didn't sound like it. It sounds no. like it's going to be uh, 3 through 8 and 11. And then science will not count as part of it. So. New Hampshire has gone with Sparta Balance. This was the rollout today that mm -hmm. we heard about. Um, so that's the up-to-date information on <laughs> what's <Exactly>. coming. <laughs> but we're still taking kneecap for two more Four years. years so. Right, so we need to address, still continue to address Absolutely. Them. Right. Absolutely. We, we still have those standards, and we need right. to concentrate right. on those. Right. But we may put less emphasis on the data and statistics standards because they're not going to be assessed right. until six, right. yeah. sixth grade this time. Yeah. Why not focus on looking at things? Yeah. 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 When we built the competencies that we've been working on, we compared them to the standards against the common core to make sure we were 
as close as we can trying to integrate mm -hmm. that. Do you have information on the common core and how much it is from what we're doing today? Mm -hmm. If you go on the New Hampshire the Department of Ed website, <coughs> you can actually hit common core. Just mm -hmm. go to C is the easiest way. Yeah. And, then, and then it can come. It will come. It's all there. 